tears on the faces of strangers that do nothing but drag me down. I can see they are sick to themselves and it sticks in my mind for days. I feel trapped by the horror, terror. blizzard outside we've been gazing all night on a purely snowblind world when she leaned in close to me and said bad blood joseph Isolated snow swept car park. 
on the edge of the marshes east of the end somewhere past the old river lay many bones seemed to be broken and I could feel my blood sitting out under the cold hard chipping shale the bleeding stopped but the hurt and the helplessness increased I was there a bad while thinking all the lonely time this is no good or godly way to die I passed out dead to the world gone to all intents a family of travellers happened by and they took me in I stayed in their company a good few months or more East and east and east again, and then north, and then further north, we pushed and pushed on. Until we reached the shoreline, I could push no further. Slowly, slowly, I came back to life. I caught glimpses of a magic I couldn't quite explain. A horse. Dag, swan. No matter where we travel, these creatures always appeared. A hare. This hare would play dead and then bound to its feet. It would stare into my eyes and then turn and bound away. A secret stolen and his to keep. This creature seemed to absorb the very badness that the beating had left within me. The hair seemed to carry the poison off, bit by bit over time. The folk who took me in, they fastened my bones with wire. They greased my skin with fat. They covered my body with felt. Screamed at me in the dark, golden faced as they danced through fire. Whispering me through the mornings, quietly urging me to rise. Laughed with me through the very days, strengthening the soul. My body grew stronger. Not everything was good though. I myself, I, I used to love to scream for the joy of living through the morning, noon and night. My larynx had been pummeled with knuckle and boot and brick. I had lost my voice. Returned to my previous existence with the realization that everything had changed. This city I grew up in had changed. The people I once worked and played with changed. The politics and the perceptions of the borough changed. Had I changed? The art and thought and sport that used to stimulate now tired and sickened. There was no humanity to be found in any given practice. Nothing fused enough to birth new ways. Not for me, anyway. Pubs and cafes and bars, all spaces just unrecognized. 
recognizable to me now. Television, cinema, the radio had become a no man's land. In every newspaper headline I had the misfortune to read. Father stabbed in front of child. Child jumps from tar block. Mother raped and bleached and roasted and so on and so barbarically so. Every newspaper headline I had the misfortune to read read as bad as any accursed prophecy waiting to be fulfilled. I see a cyclist crushed under the wheels of a lorry. I watch my best friend die of non-discerning cancer. I look on as the sky changes colour. Can you feel the earth changing shape? There is infernal noise everywhere, but what I hear most is a conspiracy of silence. What is happening to this world? What is happening to your world? Ritualizes the materials and techniques that the travelers had used to heal my shattered and frozen body. A 
sit down on the hard chipping shale, surrounded by my familiar media of fat, felt, wire, and wood. My face is coloured with gold leaf, and a dead hair is cradled in my arms. In my gold mask, I become a shaman, a healer, one whose magical incantations may work a miracle, bringing warmth to a world broken in its cycle of greed and violence. I am soundlessly, urgently whispering to the creature. I appear to regain my voice and break the silence. I make a stand. I look to the skies. See the city stretched before me. Beyond the city, another world. Better world. Better world of magic play and creative spurting dreams. Our better world. Hear my screaming, dreaming, scheming now. Listen. We need a crazy wind to blast away the null spell of this stuck age. Bring a fire to rage with blistering sparks and golden cane. Steer an incendiary boat with black hull and dark sails. Another rude turn of the wheel and a abrupt shifting of the planets. So there you have it. 
The story of Joseph Wise, lost and adrift in the East End of London, sometime soon. I just want to introduce the Radio Joy sort of orchestra tonight and say hello to everybody. Chris Briley, violin. Mr. <laughs> David Barbanel, cello. <laughs> Behind this pillar here, if you just stand up. <laughs> The man who glued everything together tonight and laid all the foundations for it, the Gavilan Bells and the Noise, Mr. Chris Lapthorne. <laughs> the legendary Mr. Peter Smith on drums. <laughs> Primal and beautiful. Whoa, piano. Mr. James. S. Finn. Yeah. And sparking the whole thing with the visuals. To the right, Miss Inga Talera. Yeah. John Brown. Hey. Tonight you're going to hear sets from Hong Kong in the 60s. The amazing Misty Roses. And again, the legendary Miss Anne Pigal. Johnny Muggum's your host. We're going to go out and drink beer now. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Just enjoy. Whoa. Woo! So much magic, so much noise. Boys, we'll be boys. <laughs> 